All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we're shooting on location. Uh, Joycey, I thought I'd get you back on the channel here in Bustleton. Uh, yeah. It's nice to have a Fremantle informed opinion for once. Yeah, great to uh, be back on the channel, Jesse. It's been a while and uh, good to, uh, you know, show the viewers my Frio side instead of getting the... Uh Eagles view like <laughs> yeah. they always do. Today we're going to be talking about your boys specifically, mm. specifically because uh, Adam Chera, there's a little bit of talk around this um, in terms of, you know, AFL trade rumours, yeah. uh, which are starting to pick up as we get towards the end of the year. So for context, he's out of contract, might be leaving Fremantle at the end of the year to talk about Richmond, Carlton, whatever like that. There was almost like a, like a little pulled story that he'd already quit the club. What was the deal with that? So yeah, on Seven News the other night, before they went to ad break, they said they were going to talk about a story and called it the devastating chair decision. So obviously a lot of Freo fans tuned in, but no story was run. So everyone was a little bit like, what the hell? Straight afterwards, I think a few people tweeted Adrian Barrich. He's tweeted back saying it's a complicated situation or something like that. Um, we couldn't run the story. So obviously then... The internet blew up with rumours that, yeah, Chera had pretty much told the club that uh, he wanted a trade. Something, I feel like something's definitely happened though. It's very odd that they would have a story and then pull it. I do agree, that's very odd. I did notice then a day later, Peter Bell said live on radio that he was very positive with the way things were tracking. Okay. And I just don't think he would say that if Chera had formally requested a trade the day before. Mm. Kind of make yourself out to look like a little bit of a fool doing that. You do, but it's kind of also a way of making it sound better than it is without Definitely. lying. As yeah. well. <laughs> this does smell a lot like the Lockie Neal um, mm. situation where I think the club was really trying to reassure the fans that yeah everything's moving in a positive direction and then obviously we all know what happened from there and i think this might be heading that way unfortunately yeah as you touched on as well though this is not the first time this has happened to freo this is a recurring yeah. trend of their rebuild which i think would otherwise be going all right like the kids you've drafted are good like brayshaw cheris are wrong sean darcy yeah. like you got a lot of young kids doing well the problem that you're having is players walking out pathway through the rebuild. Like Brad Hill was requested a trade to Fremantle, he's left. Yes. Jesse Hogan didn't work out, yep. left the club through trade. Lockie Neal left the club, and then if Chera leaves as well, how yep. devastated would you be as a fan? Yeah, not to mention Ed Langdon as well. Yeah, Ed Langdon. Look, I would, I'd be pretty annoyed. I think this one would probably annoy me more than the other ones, purely because like we've put so much time into Chera We've given him so many opportunities, probably opportunities he wouldn't have had at pretty much any other club in turn, like he's pretty much had consistent games at Fremantle from day one. Mm -hmm. So the only other clubs he probably would have got that at was like Gold Coast, yeah, maybe North Melbourne, something like that. So I've put a lot of time and energy into him. It might sound a bit harsh, but as a fan, like I don't, I don't really um think going home because you miss home is enough of an excuse if you're getting paid like seven hundred thousand dollars a year on yeah. a rebuilding club a hundred percent do you think i i prefer when i prefer player loyalty i know the game's trying to trending the other way but i think if you're going to leave do it for a valid reason and yeah. do we know his motivation so i i believe he's very well paid at Fremantle because yes. um of the nature of being a rebuilding side with a bit of extra salary cap want to keep the young talent victorian kid yeah. it sounds like he's pretty well paid already um probably more than he deserves currently, even though he's a very good talent. That's right. Um, so you'd think it's not too much about money. Can't think it's about playing time, because as you said, the opportunity's gotten. So it comes down to two things. It's either I simply want to live in Victoria, or do you think you could have lost faith in the Fremantle rebuild? But then he's going to potentially go to Carlton. So That's right. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, well, like, like I'm, not, I'm not speaking on behalf of Chera. Yeah. I feel fairly positive at the way things are tracking mm. at Fremantle. And I mean, Chera has said a number of times in the media that he has faith in the rebuild. So, I mean, if I'm going to go by his word, then I would not think that was the reason that he was leaving. I would think it more the fact that he wants to be around family mm. and friends and things like that. And yeah. we don't know what's going on in his personal life. Well, that's either. very true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Who knows about that? I guess the final part of the video is what do you want uh, in terms of a trade? So Fremantle generally do very well out of losing players in the sense that they turn it into players that will come back and, and or hard draft picks. So you got P2 for Lockie, uh, P, yeah, P2 for Lockie Weller turned that into right. Brayshaw. Yep. Um, 
in, t- in terms of Lockie Neal, you ended up getting Hogan and Lobb in that same off-season. And at the time, that looked like re- a masterstroke. Yeah. Cherry is out of contract, but what, yep. what are you hoping sort of transpires here? Um, well, Other it, than him in staying. the event that he does leave, yeah. um, I think this is a little bit of an awkward one. This, this is probably like there's not as much of an obvious um, maybe decision as to what we would do, I think. Mm. My ideal scenario would be go to the draft um, only because I just don't see that much young West Australian talent that wants to come back to WA. I think uh, Shy Bolton's one that gets talked about a little bit. Mm. Um, but, I mean, doesn't seem to be much indication that he wants to leave right now. I think Fremantle, if you look at Fremantle's history, we've done far better out of the draft. So looking at the top end West Australian talent in the draft this year, I think my ideal scenario would be us to go to the draft, pick up like a giant miss or something that... Someone that we know will probably be a Fremantle player for like 10 to 15 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as an outsider looking in, I kind of look at where Fremantle's training and I think, I feel like swapping a 22-year-old chair or whatever it is for an 18-year-old again, it's a step back. But yeah. like, I, like I think you need the mature talent. But you look at, you know, if, if you say going to a Carlton or Richmond, what players can you get on offer? Okay, Shy Bolton would be great. But failing that, then you're looking at, you know, Sam Petrevsky, Seaton's, your Zach Fishers, like yep. I mean, with with all due respect, but these are the sort of players that Fremantle have recruited in the past, and they've not fulfilled their potential. That's right. So it's it's always a risk. I think, and I think Chera is more talented than those players. So then you look at the player, the teams with the high draft pick. So did you? Was it Carlton who currently hold pick eight said they don't want to give up a first rounder for Chera? Where did we read that? I'm not sure if they was it publicly said that. Yeah, but that's I the, it doesn't make that's sense. That's the sort of rumor that's been floated about. Mm. You you'd have to think. Carlton would probably be in a strong position purely from the fact that because they would probably think if Cherry goes to the draft, they're a good chance to pick up Chera for pick eight. Mm. Um, so they could potentially do that without trading us pick eight for him, if yeah. that makes sense. Yep. It just all depends though. Are they willing to give up their first pick on Chera or are they going to try mm. and, I don't know, sort out a situation where they get Chera and they also get pick eight? Yes, so that's probably more likely. I think they could even trade pick eight for two late firsts and swap one of them out. That that could be what they try to do, but I'd, from a free perspective, a late first is not ideal for a player no. of Chera's quality, I would say. There's also the pre-season draft, which I think is more, more likely where Chera would go because you can nominate your price in the same yep. way they got Jack Martin. Yep. Um, but that would require you know free man or failing to make a trade happen at all, which also seems unlikely. So yep. let us know in the comments, guys, what do you think is going to happen with the Adam Chera deal? Uh, what do you think is a fair trade if you uh, support free man? And if you don't, we're interested in your opinion. Yep. Um, Joycey, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Jesse. Good to be back. Yes. Thanks, guys. See you in the See next ya. video.